Hello, my name is Alan Addy. My lab studies type 2 diabetes. We use mouse genetics to try to discover genes that determine whether or not an obese mouse is going to become diabetic. Several years ago, we conducted a genetic screen and identified a locus on chromosome 19 that contributed to diabetes. We went on to identify the gene. Uh, the gene is called SORX1. And uh, it wasn't immediately obvious to us what the mechanism of action of this gene was or how it contributed to type 2 diabetes. We pursued a number of leads that uh, didn't go anywhere. And uh, it wasn't until we studied uh, knockout mice that we were able to discover what the mechanism uh, was underlying the genetic susceptibility of these mice. I'm Angie Oler, and I've worked on the SORX project for many years. It wasn't until we introduced the leptin OB mutation into the knockout mice that we found a phenotype that we could follow up on. When we did do this, we saw that the knockout OBs were very, very diabetic. But then, when we, did, when we looked at an oral glucose tolerance test, which is a normal phenotype for diabetes, they responded normally um, with their insulin secretion which was very surprising to us. And it wasn't until we took out the eyelids that we noticed a severe phenotype. And that phenotype being that the knockout eyelids were very, very pale, night and day between the wild type and the knockout. This suggesting that they have a dramatic loss in insulin content. To follow that up, we measured with dithizone, which is a marker for insulin granules, as well as we went on to look at the amount of dense core vesicles by EM, and that amount of vesicles was drastically reduced in the knockout OB animals. I'm Melka Cabretta, and I worked on this project for a little over two years. So what was really striking about this uh, mice and the phenotype that we've seen is, even though the mice were severely hyperglycemic and the eyelid looked extremely pale, and that was associated with severe reduction in and insulin containing granules, uh, when we exposed the eyelid to an insulin secretion um, function test um, in response to different uh, sick trigger goals, we did not see any insulin secretion dysfunction. That was, um, that was exactly what we had seen during the oral glucose tolerance test, although the mice were hyperglycemic, they were secreting a comparable amount of insulin as with the wild type mice. So that was a big challenge for us, and one experiment actually gave us a good lead on why this may be happening in the SORX1 knockout mice, which is we isolated eyelids from both the wild type and the knockout OPOB eyelids, and we divided those eyelids into two batches, and one batch of eyelids were um, lysed, freshly lysed after they were iso uh, isolated from the mouse, and the other batch was actually exposed to high glucose condition for about an hour. And we uh, took those protein lysate and renamone gel and looked for insulin. And what we actually found was that, um, as we had seen previously in the EM and on uh, the eyelids being very pale, the knockout eyelids were um, severely depleted of their insulin content. They had a very low amount of insulin content. But uh, for the eyelids that were exposed to high glucose, they lost that little amount of insulin that they had and they were, looked like they were depleted of their insulin content, suggesting to us that maybe the mice were are diabetic because they're not able to replenish their insulin content upon chronic metabolic challenge. And we have confirmed this um, hypothesis using fluorescence microscopy with an insulin-specific marker probe that knockout eyelids have very little insulin content and upon a challenge with glucose, they can secrete their insulin, but they are they have a problem with replenishing their insulin content. So to test this hypothesis that the knockout eyelids are not able uh, to replenish their insulin content, we expose them to several um, insulin secretion challenges. So we put the eyelids into three low glucose, high glucose, low glucose, high glucose challenges. And when we looked at insulin secretion after the third challenge, the knockout eyelids were not able to secrete as much insulin as the wild type eyelids. Uh, supporting the hypothesis that SORPS1 may be important for um, replenishing insulin content in islets. So we've found a gene, SORPS1, 
that's involved in the replenishment of insulin granules. And, uh, and now we're trying to figure out at a more molecular level what the exact uh, mechanism is by which this uh, protein is involved in uh, producing uh, insulin granules. We've described to you a project where a mouse has severe diabetes, but the standard phenotyping methods that people use, not just in mice, but also in humans, didn't work. It didn't reveal the severe defects that had to be occurring to cause an animal to have such severe diabetes. Specifically, we found that when we challenge an animal with a single bout of, of glucose, we didn't see a defect in insulin secretion. And so what this means is that perhaps in humans we're missing a lot of people who have deficiencies in insulin secretion, but we don't see it because we're not subjecting them to a severe enough challenge. So I believe it's really uh, an opportunity to look deeper into uh, human subjects and we might be able to discover even more genes that contribute to diabetes susceptibility by subjecting people to more severe uh, glucose challenges.